And I think we've got a video lined up. So I will mute and veil. So it was always either sacrificing money and an account to spend time with my family or sacrificing quality time with them to chase a dollar. Prior to coming to Cemetery, um, I made six figures. I, I had a six figure income. I was pretty much almost maxed out um, where I was. So that, that ceiling was about to come. If I go take any time off, I'm actually decreasing where I'm at financially. For years, I was just out in the field. I was the grunt work. I wanted to do so much before. I wanted to donate time. I wanted to be able to come home at nine o'clock at night and still be able to be upbeat and happy with my kids and talk to them. But everything would just beat me down and everything would affect me. I've been with Symmetry for a little over two years. When you're doing what you love, it doesn't really feel like work. It just kind of feels like life. And that's what it looked like for me. We couldn't even imagine where we'd be today. I mean, basically we get up, we set our schedule, we work at our pace, we meet so many wonderful people. Like I get to focus on those things that matter and relationships, not the things that when I leave this world don't matter. We have the freedom to be able to do what we want when we want to do it. The first three months in Symmetry is when I really realized that I was doing it for myself. I wasn't doing it for somebody else. I didn't have to show up or go somewhere or do something that I didn't want to. Everything that I was doing, it was for me. Um, you know, I loved what I did. I loved what I do. I love helping people. Um, that's just a part of me. That's a part of my heart. But I have three children, you know, and I sacrificed a lot in going to school to have that freedom. And this gave us the opportunity to build a business where we could create that work-life balance where now I coach the football team of my little boy, I coach the, the basketball, and I get to go to all their baseball games. I can pick a day and get my 13-year-old granddaughter and have a whole day and do just anything we want. Now getting to have like quality conversations and quality time is the most precious thing in the world. My time now is just, it's just so much more precious that I have with my boys because I'm not stressed out as a father about are the bills going to get paid and, and stressed out on how I'm going to create my next income. Symmetry provides you from going self-employed to a business owner, it provides you a platform to create permanent income. My daughter, you know, doesn't have to have the debt of loans and financial aid. You know, I'm able to pay for her, you know, to go to college. And that's a wonderful thing to be a single mom and have three kids and be able to pay for your daughter to go to school. For the first time in my life, since I've been here for two years, I don't have to look or check my bank account to see what's in there because I know that there's quite a bit in there. The beautiful thing with this company is success is duplicatable. It's not something that's reserved for the select few. It's an incredibly diverse company and the playing field is, is level and it's fair as long as you're willing to go put in the work. And if I can help people get that same result of whatever it is they're wanting, that's what I want the future to look like for, for me and my team. Love it. That was good. Man, absolutely love it. That's why we do what we do. You just heard it. If you want to get what they got, do what they do. It gives me the chili bumps, buddy. <clears throat> no, man. The hair on my arm is standing straight up. Mm. Mm. Man, we got something special going on here. We're going to get into the, the root of a lot of it today. So before we do it, we got some awesome leaderboards to hit. So I'm going to start with that. We got some promotions to talk about. We got all kinds of good stuff today, Mr. Spivey. Who we got for new writers this week? You good to see my, you got my, you got my screen, we're good? You're good. Right. Marlo Shagan, Julie Buckman. Javier Vasquez, $8,619 as a first-time rider. We haven't done this in a while, Todd Spivey, but it is your guess because Casey's not here. Mm -hmm. What was Javier Vasquez's previous occupation prior to finding Symmetry? I'm going to go with double-A catcher for the Huntsville Trash Pandas. That's exactly what I was going to say. A, a, a baseball catcher. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. He is the Rocket City, Rocket City Trash Panda's all-time leading <laughs> switch hitting catcher. Blew out about. a knee, blew out a knee, and now yeah. he's gonna build a legacy with symmetry. I like it. He was down for a he was down for a year, didn't know what he was gonna do with his life. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, Hey, you should get an insurance license. He was like, Yeah, you get an insurance mm-hmm. license. And after the third person called him, he's like, maybe this is something I should look at. Congratulations, Javier. I, I can tell you, Brandon, $8,700 in your first week, uh, I believe 11000 was my greatest week ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, for, those of us that, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, we have no idea what Javier's previous occupation was. We do. We can find out. We just always guess at the number one. So congratulations, Javier. All the same. Top producers for the week, Jesse Bachrock, Nikki Sirocco, Keith Fonseca. Perfect timing on the call today with $30,000 in production. Good luck. Good heavens. Woo. That's what I'm talking <clears throat> about. The Boatman, the Bender, and the A-Bear. Don't you think Matthew is a an A-Bear and, or a Herbert? A Her- he- Hebert. 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 Hey, 18 applications. I'll tell you that. 18 applications. We'll call them whatever he wants to be called. You think Matthew likes uh, uh, crawfish? <laughs> yeah, he does. Do you think he likes to ride around with a shirt off in a Lincoln? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't know what, who, who doesn't? I guess. Yes. <laughs> Black question for that. The top Mel- Medicare sub writer was Julie Buckman. Well done, Julie. Top DI producers, number one was Kelly Rogers. Well done. You just kind of trip over disability policies when you're calling our leads. I love it. Top IUL producers, Nikki Sirocco, $25,445. bucks. 7 of them. Get her on the phone, Spivey. Let's figure out what's Taking going notes. on. Taking notes. Nikki, I'm calling you. I like it. Look at this, man. Annuity production is growing and growing and growing and growing. Since we kind of rolled out some stuff at the beginning of the year, halfway through the year, Last year we did a hundred million. Halfway through the year, as of last uh, the end of June, we were at over eighty million. You ain't asking questions. York could be DFL. George White, Theo Pritchett, Keith Fonseca with seventeen thousand dollars in premium. Check this out. Special announcement. Breaking news. August twelfth and thirteenth, live here in Ash Vegas. World class training for DFL. $150 gets you here and covers your first month of subscription. So if you've already signed up for this for your for your subscription, get here. We'll, we'll take a month off. We want you here. We are ready to get back in front of people. We want you to see the folks that are killing it. There's so many good things going on with DFL. Uh, we we've uh, been trialing leads for the past week. It's looking really good. Really good. Man, I got some stats this morning that blew my mind on those leads. Really? Really good. I will say, um, when we started to go through the merger and partnership with Asura, um, one of the first things Brandon and Casey and Pope had me do was jump on a plane and go spend two weeks in California. And the first event that I went to was the live boot camp training with Mike Resba for DFL. And I remember going back to the hotel after about a seven hour day and calling Brandon at 1130 at night and said, whatever we have to do to get Mike Resma to Asheville, let's do it. It was the most amazing, powerful, interactive training. And when I walked out of that meeting, having zero DFL experience before, I felt confident enough to sit down and protect my friends and family with that program. And it's going to light up so many opportunities for you out there. Yep. No doubt. 150 bucks, get here. That takes care of your first months of software, which is also roughly about that amount of, so it's kind of a wash, get your butt to Asheville. There is a max on the number of people. So might want to hurry. How do they register, Todd? They can register online at HQ, on HQ under the uh, DFL uh, sub tab. Get there. Total recruits for the week. Look at Mike and Christine. <whistles> Eric Andrick. Eight, Cook, seven, Amy Fine with five. Jacob Pogue, who we just heard from with 33. Chris Cook and his, and his whole leadership team was out of the office. 
hanging out at the lake house because they won a trip. We got to go hang out with them for a day. He still found 25. KP, 32. Man, they're killing it. License recruiting. Jordan Hunt, number one with five. Jacob Pogue and Brian Delaney, both with 13. Go rescue some licensed agents. They need your help. People say, well, how do I find them? I mean, there's a lot of ways. Just go looking. People say, well, how should I get started with recruiting? Or what, what should I use in recruiting? All of it, man. All of it. How many people are, are recruiting from the kitchen table or the virtual kitchen table? Hey, here's a real easy tip. If you're writing 18 policies, like some of these folks just were, I think I saw 29, was that the number one? If you're sitting in, call it 10 homes, in person or virtual, regardless of whether or not you make the sale, at the end of it, just say this. Todd, do you happen to know anybody that needs to make a couple thousand dollars a month, very, very, very part-time doing what I just did? We are swamped. We need people that can help you. Now, if they're looking for full-time work, we got plenty of that too, but do you happen to know anybody? That's all you have to do. Say that at the end of every appointment and watch what begins to happen. And if they say, yeah, me or my mama or my son or my neighbor, we can keep going with this game all day long, right? Okay, well, here's all I need you to do. Take a look at this website. I'm going to give you a call back tomorrow. Is that going to give you plenty of time to look at it? Or give me your mama's number, or your son's number, your neighbor's number. Call them, talk to them, do what him and them said on the last call and what they're going to say really on the next call next week. Good tip. That's how you recruit a lot of people. Run more appointments, recruit more people. New writers. Look at that. Log jam for two with Penso, Miller, Elmer, and Jimenez. Jacob Pogue, 11 new writers for the week. Ryan and Michelle Miller, seven. Cook and Purdy, both with five. Unbelievable. Season new agents, Brian Schock, Cassandra Pickerel, Darius Fossiason, uh, John Lamont, Lasan White, Wayne Highfield, and Lindsey Stewart. I don't feel good about the way I pronounce Darius's last name. I just got to come clean on that. I'm going to give uh, you a C plus maybe. I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah. a tough one. Fisazion. Fis, Fisazion. Fisazion. I had a hard enough time watching the NBA finals last night with Giannis and they kept saying his name and I kept trying to hear it and repeat it back. And I'd ask Levi, how do you say that last name again? You want to talk about one of the most dominant performances of all time sidebar. Did y'all watch that? He ended and up with 47 points, 49 points. I think he hit 50. Yeah. Yeah. 50. He hit 50 and he had a, he had an outside game. He had five blocks. I mean, and the cool thing about Giannis is go back and watch some of his press conferences. The guy gets it. He is so likable and so down to earth and understands what it takes to be a winner. That's everyone's homework this week. After you have bought the books that Hemi recommended, go study Giannis on Dika Poco. On, on Giannis. I wish I was better at saying names. You Christian Capistrano, I got that one. Well done, number one key leader for the week. Well done. Jerry Choke, $59,000. Well done. Number one agency director, Larry and Ann Griffin. Well done. Eileen Balmer is just wiping the floor with people. Man, she's killing it. Every week, seventh day at the top, $166,000. Stay tuned. We're going to hear from her next week on the National Call. Oh, I like that. John Ziller and Scott Summers neck and neck there, but Scott took it. Well done, Scotty. Kyle and Lisa Kimbrell, 165. Great week by Ayers and Sicily as well. I mean, look at all of these. This is, it's a tight, tight thing there in the senior vice president world. Ashley Tarr, the number one executive vice president. Lynn Watkins, $600,000 as the number one associate partner. Well done. Edward Pritchett, I have a feeling that's a big number. 892, 385, edging out Marshall Whalen this week, who had 859. 346. Back and forth they go. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. Kevin Purdy, the top direct. Edward Pritchett, the top base. That's a good sign, by the way. A really good sign. Promotions for the month. Spivey, Francisco Coronel, our new elite producer. Well done. New team leaders, Christina Patty, Dennis Vibert, Dixie Trevino. I like that name. I really do. 
Dustin Brassington, John Bryant, Kimberly Ruiz, Scott Lorenza, and Zachary Hutchinson. Well done, team leaders. Michael Cressy and Preston Simler, our new key leaders. Nine agency owners. Agency owners, your job <laughs> is to send us a picture so that we don't have this little logo. We want to see your picture. We're three of nine. That's not good. We got to do better than a third. 33% is not good. Brandon, think about the momentum we've got going in this company. I mean, these hobnobbins, we're going to have to get extra Zoom accounts. We're going to need, we're going to start needing a hobnob twice. Yep. It's going to be fun. Bobby Shine, Debbie and Adam Jr. already. Seems like they just got here. Gabriella Smith, Jamie Hinckley, Paige Jensen, Paul Bine. That's how you pronounce that. Summer Friesen, Wendy Octoner, and Christian Capistrano. Well done, guys. Really well done. That makes Bridget Felix, Kate Weir, and Jeremy Whitaker agency directors. It makes the Hemi, Beth Maddox, and Phil Robertson all regional agency directors. George and Janet Matthews moving on up to managing vice presidents. And Kevin Purdy is now a senior partner. How about that? Congratulations, everybody. Is there anybody else? No, wait, there's more. Andrew Jimenez and Imelda Kopinak in the final leg of the run. Not really. The final leg of a run, <clears throat> I should say. They're entering the, the yeah. Well done, Imelda and Andrew. Imelda did this um, all with, uh, you know, recovering from a broken leg, too. Don't forget. Riding around on a scooter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Didn't slow her down. She was in Costa Rica, so we she made. Yes, she was. And her, she had the coolest scooter of all time. It was all lit up and I think it had like a Mario Kart flag on it or something. It's pretty awesome. That part I might have made up. George and Janet, we announced last week, congratulations being directs. Really congratulations. Last call for agent background surveys. If you received a Slacker email with a link, please complete no later than the end of the day today. Nothing Good news on that, Brandon. I got back from Walmart yesterday, and they had plenty of toilet paper on the shelves. That's yes. good. Shame. Can we heap shame on? No, no, no. It's all good. Isn't that it's what we do around here? We we're manage gonna, we're firmly. Gonna, iron fist. We are going to assume positive intent and just know that it will be done by the end of the day. That's right. Yes, it will. But some Check great... your emails. Please get the surveys uh, handled, guys. It's going to help so much with the way we recruit, the way we build our systems, the way our technology is <laughs> designed. So much good information coming from that. And besides, you really don't want Brandon and Casey to roll your house. No. Unless you're an Auburn fan, then you like that kind of thing. Right. That's true. Right. In Fair which case, point. we will refuse to roll your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please get those done. Seriously. Upcoming events. We got Mutual of Omaha tomorrow and doing business with Mutual of Omaha. I like that title. It really cuts to it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? No ambiguity there. What are we going to talk about? You're going to talk about doing business with us. All right, I'll be there. We've got the FE training tomorrow as well. We've got Monday's sales training with Jerry Cantrell from Allison Chains, mind you. Mike Sudoff and agency owner Eric Gurr reaching up for success. And then DF Ellen, debt free living. Every Tuesday, the 27th is the next Tuesday of July. Mr. Mike Resma, there you go. We also have Whitney Zay with Logan Long on July 22nd, as in tomorrow, The Power of Unwavering Belief. Get it in your calendars. Don't be late. You're going to love it. Be there. Do amazing that's all I got. Boom. That is all I have. Now, let's get to it. Griff Martin, unveil yourself. Unveil. Now. Here's what you need to know about Griff. He's an amazing leader. He's an amazing person. He's an amazing bluegrass picker. He, uh, he plays some Eddie Rabbit better than almost anybody I've seen since Eddie Rabbit, and that <laughs> says a lot. Um, and more probably importantly for this call, at least, you're peaking out around $450,000 a month in production as an agency. Um, Griff, can we, can we kind of walk through your timeline just real quickly, briefly? Sure. Um, you joined the company when? Uh, I wrote my first piece of business in March of 2012. So I went to conference that February 
wasn't licensed and we got to hang out with Daryl Scott and play music with you guys. I think and that I'm, sealed the deal for you, wasn't oh. it? <laughs> <laughs> then I got back and I was, I was re-energized, but I really went to that first conference, conference kind of like Jimmy did, looking for a reason why this wasn't going to work for me. And I got a chance to meet you guys and see the conference. And I got back with a new level of energy and I wrote my first piece of business in March. That's great, man. And um, you have a similar story to many managers before you. There used to be someone over you, between you and Pritchett, I should say, that would be celebrating somewhere around roughly a 5% override on that number that we just threw out a minute ago. Um, that always has to kind of stick in the back of your mind. Like as you begin to recruit, uh, you never know who's going to turn into the next superstar. Now you were a musician, Griff, but you also had some sales experience before this too. You were a headhunter, correct? I was actually working in real estate right before I got in this business. So for about three years, I, three that, years, yeah. and I was doing pretty, pretty well in real estate. Uh, I just got tired of starting over, you know, you'd have plans on the weekends and have gigs, whatever it is. Somebody would come into town and say, I need to buy a house this weekend. And guess what? All your schedule, all your plans are gone. And yep. so you're, you're kind of filling their, their time. So um, that kind of annoyed me. But before that, I was a recruiter, a uh, headhunter for construction, mainly in Texas. Okay. Lived in Asheville, but we're recruiting for people in Texas. Has that, that helped? Uh, has that helped you with being a recruiter in the insurance business? Yeah. I mean, a, a big thing that I always focused on, as a matter of fact, I met Ken. Ken and I used to work at that same recruiting firm. Same with Sarah Bailey. Uh, yep. I don't know if Brendan Dave, Hoyer. And, and Brendan Hoyer and Dave Moore back in the day, right? So, Dave Moore, um, right. Dave. Um, so yeah, I mean, a big reason, a big thing that I took away from recruiting that, that I was terrible. <laughs> like when I first got started and I remember this guy putting this little sign in front of my face and it just said, smile. So I'd be hovered over my phone, not really knowing what to do, trying to pitch a candidate to a VP and, and, and they were like wanting to work with me, but I was just getting in the way. Right. And so it kind of allowed me to enjoy, you know, being on the phones and talking with people and uh, you know, not, not bombing, right? So it worked out pretty good. I got all the bombing out of the way there. So when I came here, it, it was a little bit easier for me to, to book appointments and get a result. So Nice. Um, and you've got, man, you got a heck of a team. You've got uh, Mr. Fonseca on with us, the DJ, um, who has, you know, roughly 75 to to $100,000 agency in addition to all the personal production, a DFL monster, a machine, We've got Eric and Julie Pribula, who have been previous contest winners, are unbelievable producers themselves, but also now a $275,000 agency, roughly, like, like kind of peaking out. And that's the way we grow as you go. You come down a little bit, then you go back up, and you come down a little bit, then you go back up. $275,000 there. Um, and there's such a great story on that. Just real quickly, um, Eric and Julie, if you guys can unveil as well. I know we're going to hear from all of you. Uh, in a second, but I wanted to kind of give a plug first to you guys. It looks like Julie that you're already um, on the back nine back there taking a break at your at your golf course. Uh, tell us about the golf course because you're open for business. You guys have been killing it. You brought me the coolest hat. I think you guys have an amazing logo. How can people find you and come play around the golf at your golf course? Oh man, thanks so much, Brandon. Uh, well, right here in Western Pennsylvania, Slippery Rock Golf Club and Event Center, uh, we are waiting for you. I got my clubs in the in the back, so just come on out. We'd love to have you. I uh, love to play. We're we're hoping that everyone comes back out for our Make a Wish uh, tourney again. We're going to do some fundraising this year, so um, nice. stay tuned for more on that one. We don't have a date just yet, right, Julie? Well, we have, we're, we're shooting for October, mid-October-ish. Okay. Not, not one exactly nailed down. You guys came to us, and I love this story. Um, you were a contest winner. How many years had you been here, Eric or Julie, before you kind of entered that contest? Well, we came in, uh, let's see, September or July of 2016, and uh, we won that contest in 2018. And that was okay. the, it was the SFG Open, the first one. Yep. That replaced March Radness in 2018. Yep. And, and we, I mean, I don't kind of, I don't want to toot my own horn a little bit, but I have to feel like you guys competing so well and winning that contest had a lot to do with your, your desire to go buy your own golf course, right? Everything. Definitely. Everything was, to it, do with it. It was almost <laughs> destiny. You just saw the potential, you know? It, it was that video 
afterwards that really <laughs> did it. Thank Brandon. you. Thank you. I figured it was. I just glad we kind of got that out. Um, and where did, what did you win? Where did you go? Oh, man. Oh. Probably we, one of the most magical trips ever. And you guys said it before. It was the Viking River cruise from, from where did we start, honey? Because it was a little jet laggy in the beginning. Switzerland, uh, Switzerland uh, to Amsterdam, right on the Rhine River. We were in Germany. We were in France. And, you know, they say that when you go on a trip, um, it's not just the beautiful destination, but it's it's the people that you're with. And a lot of times you're with symmetry folks, right? On the trips, this is one that was just Julie and I. And people save their whole life to be on that trip. A lot of people, it, this was like the trip of their lifetime. And we got to go based on, you know, symmetry and from symmetry. And and we just took it all in. We met so many people and and we just really let them pour into us as to what they've done all their life and and it was it was a huge huge factor in in where we are today it was nice. great association for sure brandon and and it was kind of hard to tell people like uh that we're, we were probably the youngest couple i'm not gonna lie on the cruise because like eric said people saved their whole entire life and we're like we won you know and they're like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious um man so so happy for you guys and such a great example of you know, what this business can do for you and, and unlocking when you put the work in like you guys have and you get the results that you have and you've made such an impact on so many people's lives that it allows you the bandwidth first, you know, the finances, I guess, second to be able to go out and do some some really cool passion projects like this kind of rescuing a, a golf course. Uh, and I heard that you guys also just recently rescued what it was like 150 year old in right down the street as well. Yeah, eight, built in 1844, a 12 room historical B&B that's kind of been, again, neglected and sitting in the middle of this town. And we had the opportunity. Thanks, and, you know, really thanks to Symmetry, everything we're doing here to get that. And, and it's just going crazy. I mean, people are ready to travel, you know, so we're just, we're talking to our, our manager there and, and she's like, oh yeah, I got five rooms booked for the weekend. You know, and we're just like, wow, yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. You need to, uh, you need to leave like one room open in there. So everybody that comes through gets a free DFL seminar. It's kind of like a timeshare. You, know, you can stay oh, here, right. but you have, you have to, you do have to go through an hour and a half presentation. <laughs> oh, you're talking to some creative connectors right here. So you're, you're speaking our language there, Brandon. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love it. Well, I will shut up. I've already talked way too much, Griff. I want to kind of get you guys back on. We also have Mr. Ken Crawl. You know, I, I, my earliest memory of Ken uh, Griff is, um, is we, we were doing, was it the eighties? We did an eighties conference. Um, and uh, Ken, I remember you dancing uh, and singing to, was it Footloose, right? It was the song from Footloose. Yeah. Man, you killed it too. <laughs> I voted for you, number one. <laughs> I don't know if you won, but he killed it. Have. I think you know, Nancy, Nancy Dominguez, she got up there and was a yeah. the bird and it was amazing. But uh, that's like, that's like us playing golf with Tiger Woods. Like she didn't give any strokes or anything. She just <laughs> got out there and did her thing and everybody was like, there's no way we're going to win now because she killed it. It was beautiful. I remember, I remember looking back and seeing Ken perform, and I was like, wow. I was like, it blew yeah. me away. I couldn't believe it. He was dancing Ken around. It too. Was, I know, man. Boys. Really good. Really good. Griff, I hope you know how much everybody around here appreciates you, man. Your kindness, your, your spirit. You know, what a great leader you are to your team, how well you treat everybody here, there. Everywhere you go, you leave positivity. And um, I think that's a, a, obviously a big reason why you're having so much success. So a lot of gratitude we have over here for you, buddy. Thank you, brother. Shut up and let you run the show, man. Thank you, man. And I got to turn it around just for a minute and say, I'm so thankful to be here. Uh, my life is completely different. I mean, I have an 18 month old son now and uh, I mean, I'm, my hair's going up in my arms, you know, and just the idea of being able to have a system that I can plug into and leave a legacy for him. I mean, I, my whole body has chills right now. I was thinking about that. Like, I get it now. I'm a parent. Like, I understand. <laughs> I did it for a long time. When I first came here, it was about making a six-figure income and 25 hours a week and playing music. And that's, I, was, I was able to do that, you know, making sales. And things have just changed for me so much. And it really goes right back to you and the home office and, and Casey and Brian and everything you guys have done, man. I, I'm eternally grateful, man. Thank and you, buddy. So much. Appreciate you, man.
we got to, I got to say, man, like, I think you wrote the next song. The excitement on fire is better than knowledge on ice. Sounds like the perfect tagline. Right. We got to write a tune around that. That's it does. Like, meant to happen. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, buddy. Over to you. All right, I'm going to take it over. So thank you so much, Brandon. Um, so I've got some all-stars on the line with you guys. And we're going to spend the next little bit, looks like we've got about 45 minutes, and I'm going to kind of go through each individual person. But let me kind of preface this call first by talking a little bit about, like, what is what are we going to cover? Um, you know, we're going to hit multiple points around getting business issued. Each one of these people have kind of a, their own individual superpowers, what I call it, right? Keith's got that ability to connect and, and, and meet people and just break those walls down. Julie is like one of the best on the phone. Ken's like an expert in the field. And then you have Eric, who's like all around good at all that, right? So um, we're going to kind of break down and go through each individual person. And we want you guys to kind of walk away with or walk away from today, looking at yourself and looking at your, your habits, right? So when you write a piece of business, you get somebody on the phone, you write a piece of business and we get that business issued, uh, what are the habits you have? What is that structure? What's that process you have in place for being able to do that, right? We could submit a whole bunch of business, but if it doesn't go through, nobody nobody gets helped, right? Nobody, nobody gets benefited from that. Um, so we're going to talk about how to enjoy this business, right? And, and actually have fun with this business, but um, helping families and increasing your distribution. Put it this way, you, you write, you submit $30,000 in premium and you issue 50% of that, you're going to get paid as, you've, as if you submitted 15000 So there's a lot of extra work, um, you know, submitted 15000 There's a lot of extra work you might put into this um, that we can transmit right back in and put that in your pocket. So um, what value are you truly bringing to your clients? Um, and we're going to kick off and kind of do this in a, in a line. We're going to start with Ken, and we're going to head over to Keith, and then we're going to get the Pabulas at the end here. Um, let me first mention, uh, we all got a chance to hang out in Vegas. Uh, just just last week, we had a blast. It was 116 degrees, way too hot. They kept us on the tarmac, Ken, for what, two hours or something. And then we weren't even able to take off. I mean, it was, but it was a lot of fun. And, and big shout out to, uh, to Ryan Federico for putting that meeting together. And also Keith Fonseca, you guys did an excellent job. I uh, also want to give a shout out real quick to uh, Mr. Ashton Delanga Lunde, who has, who has gotten four raises in eight months. Um, hitting top, hitting producer bonuses, and, and, and actually now is my base shop mentor. Um, and a big shout out to the entire team. Guys, last month in June, I'm so proud of like what everybody has been able to do, right? So last month, we've got the Pabula Base Shop, a master agency at 92.4% issue. We've got the Pabula Base Shop at 91.2% issue. The Fonseca Base at 86.4% issue. The Federico Master at 98.1%. Uh, the Martin Master Agency as a whole was 84.1, and the My Base Shop, the Martin Base Shop, was at 96.2%. Um, I'm extremely excited about those numbers, right? That means we're going out, we're writing business, and we're helping families. But it's really a lot about the focus, right? And that's what I want to get into with Ken real quick. Um, what are you focused on, right? Are you focused on that relationship, that long-term relationship with your client? So, Ken, I want to kick it off with you, man. And, uh, and first of all, you and I have been in this business since almost the beginning, right? Um, you've become such a good friend of mine. And, and really, I see you as an expert in this business. You really are like able to go out and for a 10 year period now, go out and make an incredible income, just personally producing and making a great income in this business is something that, I mean, I credit you so, so much for that because um, just last month you hit top producer. So in June, you issued $28,686. Let me see, wait, let me get the right numbers here. Yep. June issued 28686 uh, the month of May issued 24,752, 725. You just hit top producer. Um, and a lot of that was just about your focus. So, you know, just introduce yourself real quick and we're going to get into a couple questions. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Griff. Uh, I am Ken Crawl, direct to Griff Martin, uh, the 115. I'm, I'm uh, incredibly grateful to be invited to be on the call and uh, also grateful to be part of the 120 push we're about to start with, with you, Griff, because, you know, uh, we're going to come out of this, this next conference just blazing and it's going to be, it's going to be on fire. You know, there's not going to be any ice about it. So uh, definitely excited about that. Um, but uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I think, I think one of the big things uh, is uh, if you want to get paid what you're worth, yeah, get your business issued and keep it issued. And that's all about relationships. You know, I'm going to be talking about that. I think all, all of the panelists you have on today we're all going to be talking a lot about that relationship that helps you know get your business issued, helps keep your business issued. Absolutely, man. So think about it this way: like, what is the experience that your client has with you, right? 
That's extremely important. When you walk into a doctor's office, there is an experience that you have. You walk in the right. front, greet it a certain way. You go to this other room. It's every, if, is it professional or is it kind of janky? Is it, you know, what is that experience? And so you can offer that. You've got to look at your, yourself and say, what experience am I giving my client? as they come into this business. So, you know, a couple of things I'd, I'd say about you real quick, Ken, is uh, you've got integrity, man. You're honest, right? You're honest with your clients. Um, you, you commit to your clients. You were willing to tell them something and then actually go and do something, you know, right? right? Do what you say you're gonna do. Um, and you pay attention, right? You listen to your people, you listen to your clients. When they have an issue, you're trying to solve it. You're very meticulous about that. And I love that. And you pay attention to your emails. I know that doesn't make, maybe for some people that doesn't mean a lot, but if you get an email from a carrier, you read it, you follow up with that client and you're willing to go ahead and knock that out. Some people ignore them. Okay. So these are some things that I think in terms of achieving longevity in this business that we need to make sure that we do. So talk a little bit about like, I want to mention first, you know, you put a new sense of focus over the last few months on your issue business. And I remember you saying, it's like, man, this is crazy. I was so focused on submit for so long. And now I'm not only focused on submit, that's got to be there, right? But now you're very focused on that issue business. How has that changed your, your outlook in this business? And how has that helped you? Well, I mean, the whole company has changed that. All of our promotions and things used to be based on submit. Um, it's easier to hit a lot of promotions on submit. You know, some part of me kind of wishes that maybe I had uh, uh, <laughs> made hay while the sun shined on some of those deals. But uh but it makes a lot more sense for things to be oriented around net place because you can put up a bunch, you know, there, to stay in good standing with a carrier, you have to have what, like 30% persistency. Guys, if you've got 30% persistency, you're going out of business. Like, I don't care if the carriers like you or not. Like, it, it, you know, it, most of us here, we're talking about two year persistency in the 70s, 80s, even 90s percent. And that's important because. Uh, you know, chargebacks are a thing and uh, you want to get yourself to a place where you don't really even notice them. And, you know, you, that's one of the reasons I check my emails because I'm not going to notice by my bank account when something falls off. And that's a that's a high quality problem. But, you know, that does mean I've got to pay, pay closer attention. But yeah, for sure. And uh, do you want me to kind of get into a little bit of like how that works? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, sure thing, man. Like you, yeah. you put a new focus on it for sure. And and you trans you, you were focused on submit for so long and things were kind of falling through the cracks here and there. And then all of a sudden things really changed for you. And you were you were tracking on a spreadsheet. You put all your business on a spreadsheet and you knew exactly what was going on and where it was going. It was very meticulous. It was it was very well laid out. So yeah, kind of dig into it a little bit. Well, I mean, I love what I do. And so I take some of it for granted. Um, when we were in Vegas, uh, we were, you know, I read a lot of America and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But when we were in Vegas, one of the other carrier representatives was kind of, you know, bought me a beer, was kind of pulling my ear a little bit. And um, one of the things he asked me, and it was kind of bizarre how much this put it into relief for me, but he said, um, with you writing XYZ with that company, um, how do you, what do you, like, what keeps another agent from coming in, you know, the next agent that comes in behind you from just replacing that? And when he asked me that, I realized how far in that is to my experience. I mean, I'm kind of, you know, patting myself on the back a little bit here, but truthfully, it hadn't occurred to me that I take it for granted that my clients aren't going to talk to other agents. I actually asked the other, the rep, like, well, you know, the premise of your question, like, why are my clients in your scenario? Why are my clients talking to somebody else? That doesn't make sense. So, you know, if, if our clients trust us, they're not talking to somebody else. We become their agent. And we can, you know, I, I can't, we can't ever underestimate the power of setting the right expectation. Um, it's the first step of the, of the five touch follow-up. I'm not going to go down the, that rabbit hole, but the five touch follow-up guys, it's in our quality training materials, get it, learn it. But the first step is set the right expectation because that's the foundation for everything else. So, uh, and, and it does keep, other agents out of the home keeps us in contact with our client. Uh, it keeps, it, it, it leads to business down the road. My phone rings at least once a week now with a client I already have wanting me to put them back on my calendar. So, um, but like I was saying, you know, we can't underestimate the, the power of setting the right expectations because uh, people like to be told what's going to happen it, with authority and confidence. And even if you're brand new, right? Telling people what's going to happen with authority and confidence and then being able to watch that happen. If you think about it, everybody we trust, if it's your spouse all the way down to the bus driver, whether or not we trust that person really comes down to some version of is what this person tells me is going to happen, what happens? 
Mm -hmm. right? So in order for us to, to, to tr in order for our clients to trust us, first of all, we have to know what's going to happen. So, you know, we'll, we'll circle back to that. But, but, but the other big part of that is, um, is us being able to, to give them a very clear expectation even if it's going to lead to objections, like we want to pull those out, just like every other part of the home script. But before leaving the home, making sure that client knows these are the different things that could, you know, the different ways this might play out. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty key. So true, man. And setting an expectation for your client, you've got to know exactly what it's going to look like, right? So what are you going to say? What are those points you're going to hit on? Right now you are, and I'll give me another, I want to rewind for just a minute. Think about it this for a minute. If you've written a piece of business and that client called the carrier directly and didn't call you, what kind of relationship have you really formed with that client? Why, why are they not calling you, right? That's that's the right. first thing I would have. I was like, why did this person call me? And let me just pause for a second. I got to make sure I didn't quite introduce myself. My name is Griff Martin. I am directed Edward Pritchett, and I'm very, very thankful to have him. All of us are to have him as a mentor and a person that we can all confide in. We learned a lot of this from him, right? So I've got to give credit where credit is due for sure, man. Um, so yeah, let's get so so let's get into it. Like, what are you saying? How are you yeah. setting a clear expectation for a client? Um, you know, what what is that process for you? Yeah, well, I mean, there's really four things, and all four of them. I'm glad you mentioned that about Edward because Edward, Ayers, and Sicily. Uh, a lot of the people who are writing our scripts now are the people that I've shamelessly plagiarized every one of these four things from. There's four things that are in every shutdown, uh, as far as burn. You know, we call it burning it down, uh, and that's really making sure that our client. It's it's testing that confidence in the work we've done and and in how much a client likes me wants to work with me they're not going to be talking to other people they're not going to be shopping this around um, if they are I want to know that while I'm sitting there so um, but all of these are things that you know I was having an issue and somebody gave me a tip and I worked that into that close down and now lo and behold the new scripts roll out and there those things are so it's really kind of cool to see that uh, that come through but um, one of those, and I think Keith is going to talk a little on this, so I'm not going to really belabor it, but the first is acknowledging in the appointment and in the close down, like this isn't the most, like this isn't the least expensive thing, right? Uh, price is only a, an issue in absence of value. Uh, that doesn't mean we tell them like, yeah, don't you love the fact that you're paying more than you need to for your insurance? No, it's, it, it's, it's making sure that the client has an appreciation for, hey, you might, you know, most of the industry sells this thing by cost. So I want you to know like this you know, Keith said something yesterday and I, I it was, you know, it made me grin ear to ear because I say it in every appointment. Uh, I want you guys to know you're going to see less expensive options than this. Do you, do you understand why that is? And I want my client to tell, to tell me like, yeah, because, you know, there's just regular life insurance and this has like return of premium and, you know, and, and really kind of sell it back to me. And that's when I know, okay, cool. They understand that and letting them know, look, if you do see something, or somebody else shows you something, or you see anything on TV, and it does look better than what you've got, call me, because, and I want to be vulnerable here, hey, it might be something I don't know about, and if it is, I need to know about it. The real reason, of course, we all know, is because then we can compare apples to apples and let them know, hey, that's, yeah, that's less expensive, but here's why. So that's the first thing, is really setting up the value of what we're doing. Um, the, the second part is, uh, you know, I said there are four things. The, the second part is, uh, Griff, something you gave me which is pulling up the calendar on my phone. Uh, it's visual. It's a little trick, but I, I'll be darned if it doesn't work. Uh, turning my phone calendar around and saying, okay, guys, so this is us right here on Monday. Um, if this goes through really quick, which it could, um, that first premium might come out somewhere right here, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, it could also take longer, but just in case, if that comes out right here, is that going to cause you guys any problems with cash flow? Uh, with your bank, anything like that. Guys, I let, when I was new in this business, I let money come out of people's account that they weren't expecting. And that wasn't a celebration when that happened. Um, we want that to be a celebration. That means they got covered. That, mean they, that means not only did they get covered, they got covered exactly the way they wanted to be. That's like, guys, this is the insurance industry. What we do are minor miracles in terms, of, you know, we take it for granted, but like they got in two days, exactly what they applied for, exactly the way they applied for it. Sometimes I think we might not appreciate how cool that is. So we want that cool to happen. Um, so letting them know, pulling out that expectation and also making sure that we've set that up in case it doesn't go through, that we let them know, okay guys, if that doesn't go through, then here's what's going to happen, right? I'm gonna come right back out. I've got another option. It's gonna be just as good. And that's for two reasons. One, because 
you know, even if I get an instant approval, I never tell a client that. I let them know everything's looking good so far. You know, we've got a tentative thing. I never say, guys, this is in the bag because two things. One, anything can happen between approval and issue. And I don't ever want to be in the end zone doing an end zone dance when I get that email from an underwriter, right? But the other reason is because when I call that client and say, hey, John, great news. Keep an eye out for that first premium, like I said, because it went straight through. I want him doing the end zone dance. And, and he can't do that if we do the takeaway. We're very good at our jobs. And I don't ever want that to be understood by the client as this is easy. It's not easy. What we do is just, we're just really good at what we do. So when that goes through in 24 hours, I don't want that to belittle the value of his policy, him thinking, well, I got that in 24 hours. How, you know, how tough could that have been to get? Like, no, a lot of times, a lot of the work he doesn't see is stuff I did before we even talked, right? And we all know that. So, so that, that part, you know, that, that building value around that is key. And a big part of that is giving yourself some room, right? Let your clients know like, hey, this may not be perfect, right? It may be that we need to come back out and get a piece of paper filled out, like a sign. Maybe we need to go to option B, right? So give yourself a little bit of room, you know, it, it prepare them for this thing to take a week or two, right? I love that, man. Um, you know, the, you write a lot. What's that? The, the, the third, I just wanted to, to touch the, the last two real quick. The third is uh, ask them not to cancel. I was getting a lot of those calls when I was new. Uh, I remember I was in DC with Ayers Newsom and I was telling him, man, I keep getting those calls that start. We've all gotten it before, right? My wife and I were talking. Nothing good ever comes after that, right? So, so you know, he was saying, uh, and I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm, people are calling me and canceling. And he flat, I thought he was putting me on, but Ayers said to me, have you tried telling them not to cancel? And I thought he was making fun of me, but he gave me, you know, that part of this, which is, um, uh, I want to make sure we're doing this for the right reasons. So can you think of any reason? Let's revisit that premium one more time. Can you think of any reason that you'll have to cancel this policy? Because the only insurance that matters is what you have when you need it. And inviting that cancellation and having them say no, because it makes them recon it really makes them consider it, but also it makes them say out loud they're not going to cancel. And the the psychological power of them saying, especially guys for whatever reason, I don't know why, but especially guys for whatever reason, and they say, I'm not going to call you next week and cancel, they'll probably chew their own arm off before they dial that phone to make that call. And then finally, the last thing in every home is letting them know, uh, guys, you're, you know, it takes a little while sometimes for this to get into our system. So you're going to stay in our system for a while. So if you get any other calls about this, let them know you're working with Ken and use my name and this is also solidifying for the client what my name is, right? I want them to have that moment where they, they put my name in their phone. They know who I am. They remember my name is Ken. Tell them my name because if you use my name, they'll leave you alone. I don't want anybody messing with this that doesn't understand what we're doing here. And if they don't leave you alone for any reason, just give them my phone number and have them reach out to me. That, that part of that shutdown shows a lot of confidence, right? Nobody wants to talk to the next guy. Have them call me, right? Mm -hmm. That shows a level of confidence in what we're doing. Like if they don't take your word for it, have them call me. If they're not on my team, meaning they're really not gonna mess with my client, then they're one of my competitors and I want them to understand what we're doing. Cause I would do the same as a professional courtesy if they were doing good work for their clients and I was the next person in the door. So, you know, those points, Griff are just, you know, those are huge. Yeah, dude, those are some great tips. I mean, we gotta give ourselves some room with a client. When we're talking with a client, prepare them for, you know, not the worst, but like, it's okay to acknowledge those things. It's good. It's okay. It's not going to be perfect. Right. So many people, when they first get started, they, they run over, they get an application signed, they run home. They're like, I got an application signed. And then all of a sudden, you know, we don't say some of these things. We don't address some of the possibilities, right. Moving forward. And then all of a sudden, you know, they can, they can very easily cancel. Thank you again. I appreciate you, man. You bet. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure thing. Um, Mr. Mr. DJ debt free, Mr. Keith Fonseca, where you at buddy? How you doing, man? I like that shirt. Looking good. I got a dress for the beach, brother. I'm here at the beach, <laughs> loving life. You're down in Florida, aren't you? Yeah, my parents have a condo on St. Pete Beach. The uh, family has had it since the mid 90s. And unfortunately, they're not well. My parents are not. So we had some contractors take advantage of them. So, man, I got to come down here and uh, kick some butt, you know, get it cleaned up, get some time away. But, man, am I so grateful to Brandon, Brian, and Casey for you know, the pivot last year, right at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, driving all over the place to people's homes. And now I can run my business from anywhere, right? I can run it from a, uh, a little shack in the middle of the forest, 
or I can do it from Las Vegas, which I did last week, two days. I just kind of hung out in my comp room over there. It was awesome. and just ran business. And you saw I wrote all that business right there from the room. And then uh, to be able to just on a dime come down here to Florida and take care of business for my parents. I'm super grateful to Symmetry for giving us virtual sales. Like It's like nothing I've never, ever thought of before. Um, to be honest, I've always, Griff, always dreamt of being able to earn a living, own a business, and do it in basketball shorts. <laughs> I do all my appointments in basketball shorts, bro. <laughs> basketball shorts all the time for this guy. Yeah, well, at least I'm glad you're wearing some shorts. That's good, man. I'm glad you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely shorts when the appointments happen. Oh, man. Keep it, keep it comfortable, right? Um, nope. No, this morning, I think I took my son for a walk and I took him a walk down the road and he got out, ran around a little bit. I got a chance to spend that time. And then I was able to be on conference calls, talking to great people and some of my best friends, man. So accolades on you real quick, Keith, um, just so you guys can get to know, get to know this person that we're talking with, right? Uh, agency owner, top producer, also known as DJ Debt Free, right? So he, uh, he is uh, one of the top leaders in uh, Debt Free Life. Um, started SFG back in August of 2018. Uh, so we're, you know, Ken, more the veteran. Now we get now we get a chance to hear from somebody a little bit a little bit newer to the business, right? Um, wrote three hundred sixty seven thousand in, in two thousand twenty, right during a pandemic. Uh, basically all virtual. I remember you were working out of New Jersey, I believe, and up there yeah, out of my bedroom, out of his bedroom, right? I roll out of bed and walk around to the desk <laughs> and sit down and run appointments. <laughs> Man, I love this business. That's so cool. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Yeah, oh yeah. Qualified for AO back in two thousand twenty. Uh, the number one producer in the Pritchett Master, I believe, right now, and also a, a recipient of the 2020 Quality Impact Award. Uh, and I just listened to a podcast this morning you were on with uh, the Carl Gold uh, um, podcast, which is which is excellent. So congratulations. Yeah, I got to talk about Debt Free Life to a bunch of CEOs and business owners. Um, I mean, again, so grateful to you, Griff, personally. I can't wait for the 120 run. We're in it. I remember sitting next to you at altitude two years ago, right? We're going to be back at altitude in a couple of weeks, two years ago, you and I sat shoulder to shoulder and I turned and looked at you and I said, I am going to be the number one debt-free life writer in all of symmetry, in all of your organization. You looked at me, you're like, cool, man. And that day, what was born, right? DJ debt-free came on the scene. Uh, Chris Clark just told me I had to be myself. So boom, here we are. <laughs> I love it, man. This is, has to be fun, man. It has to be fun. Every time you do that horn, it like blows the speakers. I mean, I mean obviously you're not screaming. <laughs> the computer just lights up. It's hilarious. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get into a couple of questions, man. I mean, uh, you've got a lot. You've got a lot you should share. I want to get to Eric and Julie at the end. So we have, we have sure. uh, a little bit of time. We can kind of break down a few things. Um, yeah. I call it your superpower. That ability to be authentic and, and sincere with your clients. And I think that is something that I want to let you kind of get into for a minute. Um, and, and talk a little bit about why that's important to you. I know you kind of tell your story when you first get kicked off. So I'm going to give you the field, man, and let you kind of break down why is that important and how do you do it? All right, let me back up for a second from all, all jokes aside and fun aside. Um, I am agency owner Keith Fonseca. I am super grateful to be here at Symmetry Financial Group. Um, started in August of 2018, like Griff said. And uh, I would not be here if it wasn't for my best friend and business partner, Ryan Federico, um, who was actually going to speak in this spot, right? And stepped aside and said, I think, you know, I want Symmetry to hear what Keith has to say. So if you want to have success in this business, you know, get around people that you love, that care about you, will show up for you. I can't tell you, Griff, how much it meant to have like lunch with you and Edward and be with Ryan in Vegas. Like these are the people I get to do life with. Um, and isn't Ken Crawl like such a treasure, man? Like listening to him is, you know, it blows you away. I get to work with Eric and Julie Prabula. Like they have taught me so much. I have grown in this business and I like to speak to the new person here more often than not because it's typically Griff, that person who's struggling, who, you know, has that lack of self-worth, that lack of self-belief, who battles depression, who battles anxiety, who's afraid in appointments, afraid to get on the phone. And guess what? Me too. I didn't write business for nine months and I quit this business. And it was people like Ryan who said, like, you've got to find your worth. So when we talk about getting paid what you're worth, right, and getting business issued, 
it starts with knowing your own self-worth and your own self-growth. So, you know, hopefully we can disrupt some people today in their uh, thinking and their feelings about what they're worth to seek it out. A guy started doing some work with Steve Weatherford, a Super Bowl champion punter for the New York Giants. He told me personally, may today be a day of discomfort or discipline. May today be a day of discomfort or discipline. So yeah, authenticity, right? Like in my first conference that Ryan and I went to, we sat in this session with Mr. Carlton Lear, super great friend, always making an impact. And I just remember him writing this on the board. And I think he took it from Casey, right? So I want to give Casey credit. I don't know who came up with this equation, but it was L plus T equals dollar sign. And dude, when I got here, I couldn't spell insurance. Right. I'm just like a, a big emotional heart guy running around. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Right. I, you know, I rely on people like Ryan and yourself and Edward and Eric and Julie to like mentor me about what the insurance is about. And yeah, I have a little bit of intelligence to be able to understand, you know, like compound interest does this and this does this. But really, truly, when we're sitting with people like they want to like who they're working with. And that's why the L plus T equals dollar sign. The L is likability. So I wanted to give people a few quick tips and tools, right? Uh, straight from what I've learned from folks. First of all, let's take away some books. So uh, everything we do is based on go for no. And you notice I don't just have the go for no book. I have like the workbook because self-worth is about work. You want to be a great leader. We're studying this in our group, right? 21 Laws of Leadership from John Maxwell. For anybody that's offended by the name of this book, let me apologize now, right? But this book has unlocked everything in me, right? No excuses. The guy says, it's, you're on the hook. Your life is your responsibility. And guess what? It comes with a workbook, which is like all kinds of written in, all kinds of pain went into that book, pouring it out. So how do you get likable in an appointment, right? Let's if you got a pen, write this down because this is what works for me. Again, not knowing anything about insurance to be able to get people to buy. I don't sell a thing. Number one, to be likable. Cicely Newsom told me you got to ask quality questions. Mm -hmm. Ask about the people and dig deep into layers. So, you know, everyone would say, how long have you been in the home? It's mortgage protection. Uh-uh. I asked them about them, right? How long have you guys been married? That takes a lot of guts, to ask something personal that might be uncomfortable for them to answer. How did you guys meet? What are your plans in the future? And I'm continually digging deep into those questions because people want to feel listened to. They want to feel understood, seek to understand in instead of being understood. So I'm seeking to understand them by digging those deep layer questions and then I'm mirroring it back. Oh yeah, me too. I would love to take a trip like that. The second part of likability is vulnerability, which is, you know, Brene Brown 101. It's not easy for most of us to get vulnerable. Most people know I came to this business because my uh, younger brother, Andrew, hit by a drunk driver in 2002, went through 14 years of surgeries. Um, in 2014, received a kidney transplant. Um, the dude was my hero, right? And in 2016, he died. And my parents are coming here actually to... Uh, Memor uh, commemorize the five-year anniversary. It'll be August 4th, 2021 is the five-year anniversary of his passing. Rocked my world still does, right? And um, I share that story on every appointment, Griff, mm -hmm. just like I just shared it with you. In the same way, I get emotional when I think about it. I mean, right when the pandemic hit last year in March of 2020, my sister-in-law died too. My other brother's wife, and so now, you know, my brother's left without his wife and Symmetry gave me an outlet to win the Pura Vida contest and go to Costa Rica, right? We're all going to be there in like five or six weeks. And I'm bringing my little brother who just lost his wife. Like what other company gives us that kind of opportunity, right? To be able to impact families, provide for ourselves, but it's not going to happen without the R and the E of the real system, which is rapport and emotion. I don't leave any appointment without pouring out into rapport and emotion. And you know how many cancellations I get? I can count them on two hands, right? From all of last year, the business gets issued, like Ken said, because people believe and trust uh, what I'm talking about. So L was the likability. So 
maybe we can get into the T for trust. Do it, man. I mean, I think this is this is good stuff, guys. You realize how a lot of times when you're working with somebody new, they feel like they need to sell somebody a policy. I need to learn all these products and figure out what to do so I can know what to tell them and what to try to get them to buy, right? That's just such the backward mindset, right? You, you said in the very beginning of that, we help people find something that's going to work for them. We help people buy something. Casey Watkins has been talking about this since the day I walked in this door, <laughs> right? And I love it, but it's 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 about being vulnerable. It's about putting yourself out there a little bit. You've got to leave a piece of you in the home, right? So it's, and it's okay to do that. And it might be a little bit uncomfortable, right? It might not be something that you're real, that it's easy for you, right? Um, but we got- The other half of that, oh, I'm sorry. The other half of that is the trust piece, right? Mm -hmm. And to gain trust, in my opinion, especially when we're new, uh, we don't know all the insurance terms. We, we don't exactly know what we're doing in the appointment. It's posture, right? The system works. It works unequivocally. I've never been around anything that works better than this. What doesn't work half the time is me, right? As the producer, I'm the one who's not working because I'm worried about my rent. I'm worried about the next car payment. I'm worried about, I'm worried about the fact that they may not like me. And if they don't like me, they're probably not gonna trust me. If they don't trust me, they're not gonna buy. So how can I build trust? Ladies and gentlemen, it's posture. Posture is what creates trust in an appointment, in a home, on Zoom, on the phone, that posture. So what does that look like? Number one, it's assumption, right? Uh, I've adopted this. It took me a while to work through my own barriers to get to this point, right? If you can write anything down, write this down. If they show up for this appointment, we're writing an application. I'm covering this family. If they show up, I'm writing them an application. They're going to have to sell me on why they're not buying that day. And like uh, Ken just said, I never give them the cheapest. I tell them it's not the cheapest, right? Why do we order like $20 fully like amazing large pizza for my favorite pizza place in town instead of Domino's who give me two for six bucks because the quality isn't there. I have to like show value in that appointment about what we're talking about. Number one value is the producer, is the person they're meeting with. A uh, quick story in 2008, late 2008, I was in a doctor's office. She opened me up, the doctor, and she looked at me and she said, if I don't take you into surgery in the next 48 hours, you'll be dead by the end of the week, right? That doctor gave me a week to live. And she said it with such conviction. I looked at her, I go, okay, doc, let's go now, right now. Take me to surgery right now. She's like, okay. 12 hours later, I'm in surgery and that doctor saved my life, right? That trust was immediate. I'd never met her before. Mm -hmm. I didn't know her background. I don't know her education. She could have just grabbed the lab coat and walked into that appointment, right? But the right. way she said it, the posture with which she was uh, bringing the passion she had for helping me, like that just made all the difference. So now when I go into an appointment, if I'm like letting them ask the questions and I'm like scared and nervous, hmm, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. If I'm not taking the lead, they're going to lead me right out of an opportunity to protect their family. And so never present the cheapest. Tell them it's not the cheapest. Show them you believe in what you're presenting. Talk about it and why. Right, because the value, like say for me, I write almost exclusively Foresters when I can. You know, they just have so much value. Um, and I know their process. So I know how to get the business issued. I know who to talk to. I know like uh, underwriters there. I know new business people there. They all know me as DJ Keith. I treat them like their clients. When I'm talking to them, I'm asking about their lives. I'm asking about their families. So yeah, become an expert. Uh, in one or two carriers, if you can. And uh, last thing I want to leave you with is this is uh, Lily, the dancing llama. I got this from uh, Jenny, Jenny was, Pongle on our team, right? The dancing llama. I was really, I, I need, I was trying to figure out what in the world it is. And I got to say, the dancing llama was the last thing I expected. <laughs> and Lily, the dancing llama, has been all on, on all my appointments lately because she's fun. Like, this is supposed to be fun, this is not supposed to be pressure. And one of my spiritual nicknames is the Dancing Llama. So uh, yeah, Jenny gave me Lily and I'm super, people love Lily. I, I show Lily on the appointments. I um, went to a lady's home, first in-home appointment, I don't know, and I, a year and a half. And I talked about 
you know, the fun. We had dinner for two, three hours and we wrote a $325,000 annuity and a $17,000 debt-free life. And that was a uh, A1 lead, eight bucks. Love it, like, what could be better than symmetry and this opportunity, man? And you don't have to know everything about insurance. You just have to believe yeah. in yourself. Well, and we're going to go right back to the idea of what's that person's experience, right? When you call them and you walk through that appointment and you, you follow up, I mean, what is that experience the client has? Man, I, we could go all day on this, man. I oh, really man, we just cram like eight hours of stuff into like 15 minutes. I know I'm <laughs> over. I, you know, I want to hear Eric and Julie. Thank you for the invitation, Griff. Thank you, Brandon, Brian, and Casey, Symmetry Nation. I'll always be grateful to you. Absolutely, man. He's so happy to have you on the team, man, and what you're doing and the impact you're making uh, with the families that you work with, man. And it's very obvious that you give a piece of to yourself to each one of the people that you work with. You care about the people that you're working with. And that is extremely important to me, right? We don't sell people an insurance policy. These are not leads. These are families that need protection. And so, and I love the, the white glasses too, man. Gotta love it. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Eric and Julie, let's get you guys to unveil. I want to, um, I don't want to forsake wow. everybody. I want them to wow. hear us. Yeah. Good stuff, Good huh? Good stuff, man. I mean, I got a book full of notes. Ken, Keith, thank you so much. I mean, so well worth it. Oh, okay. Eric's changing. Eric's changing now. He's getting his, uh, his uh, AKA white glasses on, which is- uh, we, we, we won best dress thanks to Miranda Martin at the Costa Rica Make-A-Wish tournament. I thought I would just sport my, um, my blonde hair today. Love it, man. You've been in the sun a lot. I can see. Yeah, it's like it's like. Keith, I'm going to send this to you. <laughs> yeah, that with the white glasses would look good. I bet that's not so awesome. awesome. All right, so just so you guys know, I know uh, Brandon hit a couple of their uh, accolades in the beginning, but um, first place SFG Open in 2018, uh, 2018 Impact Award as well, um, and also second place in the November to Remember uh, 2018, and second place in the March Mad Radness 2019. Uh, been on a, just won a lot of trips. They also do hold the record 75 applications off of one lead. Okay. Now we got another family. I believe you've written 54 applications on, and then a lot of other families with 20 plus applications on one lead. Okay, guys, you guys want to talk about bringing value to our lead system. I mean, that is ridiculous. So, um, Julie, I want to start with you for a minute. And, uh, I think, I think you're, first of all, I'm so, hey, I'm so grateful to be in business with both of you. I mean, I think about like having to go to a job and like everybody who goes to a job has to be in a place where they dodge people that they don't want to talk to and all that. And it's the exact opposite for me. And I'm so thankful, like being able to talk with you guys on a regular basis and Keith, Ken and, and everybody in the company, I'm just filled with gratitude in that regards. So um, I credit you, Julie, as being one of the best people we have on the phones. Uh, in terms of being able to work that phone script and get that information and setting Eric up. So I went ahead, I want to hand it over to you. And uh, she's going to mention the five R's. Write this down real quick. The five R's are rugrats, referrals, retirement, recruit, and replacement. I'll say it one more time. Rugrats, referrals, recruitment, re re uh, retirement, and replacement. All right. So I, I just want you to kind of talk a little bit about the phones we're talking about issuing business. Um, why is it like, what's your general idea on the phones? Like, what, what are some of those things that you think are extremely important? We're not going to talk specifically about the phone script. You guys can read the phone script, right? I'm more or less thinking about like, what's your mindset going into a call and how does that help you get business issued? Thank you so much, Griff. And, and thanks to all the uh, guests on this call. Such, such a great inspiration to all of us. And Please, guys, if you haven't started, take notes. This is all recorded information. So I'd see a lot of people asking, where do I find this? You find it on SoundCloud. <laughs> That's where you find it. This is uh, all recorded and just keep keep listening and sharing this good information. Um, but Julie Prabula here, direct uh, to Mike and Lorraine Gamba uh, and Griff Martin and the Edward Pritchett hierarchy. Griff, when you asked me about getting paid for what you're worth, you know, I had to sit and think about that because um, I have to embody who I am and everybody on this call, whether you are a licensed professional licensed agent or studying to be a professional licensed agent, right? We are the ones that ask the tough questions. But just like Keith said, you know, if you're not likable first here on the phones, how in the world are you going to get into somebody's home? How are they going to trust you enough to jump on your Zoom and write some applications, right? So 
Um, I like to embody the slow and low, right? What we learned from the very beginning and, and also add a couple of R's to that, Griff, and that's relaxed and relatable, right? We need to be relaxed and relatable because no one wants a tornado to come into their home or doesn't have time for a telemarketer who talks really fast on the phone and wants to get everything out in, in only a few seconds before you hang up. You know, that's not us. <laughs> We are professional licensed agents. We are not telemarketers and guys and gals. I say that because I told myself that lie when I came into this business. Oh, this is just a glorified telemarketing position, Griff. I know all about it. You're going to get me on the phones so I can make a bazillion dials for you and make you all the money, right? Because I've been there, done that before. Guys and gals, this is not that. You know, we are not telemarketers. So get that out of my head first, right? I had to get that out of my head. And yeah, this is the tough, this is a tough job, right? We ask the tough questions. We do the things nobody else does to live the life that everybody wants. You heard it from Jacob Pogue. He's getting his pool filled up right now. You know, you, you heard it from Andrew Jimenez earlier on the, on the previous call that, you know, these guys are just, and gals are just making so much life changes because they've entered a life changing business. And that's what this is. Um, you know, we could, yeah, we could all get $15 an hour and how fun would that be? <laughs> right. So Griff, you know, first I, I have to say that I had to shut down those lies and then I had to start plugging in to the business. Mm -hmm. I had to understand Oh, this is what I want. I want to be my own boss. I want my own business. I want my own time and money on, on my terms, right? And when I started plugging in to these calls, I, you know, I was, I was working corporate. I would put in my earbud and I'd pretend like I'm working in my cubicle, whatever. And I'm listening to all this great information that, you know, that Ken and, and Keith right now are pouring into us. But it was it was somebody else, you know, five years ago, um, and it was so good, just like it is today it is so good that I said, oh, shoot, I, I was believing a lie. Um, so uh, I just have to say I have to start with that, Griff, because this is this is a life changing business. If you're still studying, finish, pass, get your license and jump into your business um, because you're doing it for you. And. And it does. It all starts on the phones because, you know, I, I wish uh, I wish I was wearing one of Ryan Federico's rich broke shirts because it shows us just that, you know, the rich broke um, because it starts here. And Sarah Pappas said it on a on a, na on a national call. And I listened to that audio relentlessly. It all starts on the phones. If I understand this script that made Casey Watkins famous, if I don't leave anything out. And then I embody my, my slow and low, my relaxed and relatable, my mentality that I'm here to make a friend first. I'm getting somebody to like me first. And then I can do my business, right? And so, yes, you see this? It doesn't go away, Griff. I smile on the phones. I smile on my scripts. And, and keep that smile strong because it's relatable. It's translatable on the phones. It's definitely viewable on Zoom, even though they don't turn on their phone or they're, they don't unmask themselves. We're unmasked. We have lots to talk about, you know, in our backgrounds. Um, so Griff, you mentioned the five R's. Those five R's are at the end of the in-home script. When I started making dials and I started sitting in homes, I thought, I need to answer those five R's on the phone. And that will get this, this conversation, my rapport building, it would, it would start the conversation. Um, I'm here with, with a friend first because I've wrote all my notes and I know their kids, friends know your kids' names. Friends know what you did when I was calling. Yo, you were at that soccer game, how'd it go? How'd a little Bobby do? Who made all the points? Friends talk about you. And I think Keith said it, right? You wanna let them talk because they will talk about themselves all day long. And um, I, so I said, wow, this script that Casey created, the best system script that you can find on, on Quility HQ, um, 
is it HQ or HD uh, on Quility site? You can find that easily on the training site on the Getting Started tab. Click on the Best System script and don't leave anything out. Read it just like it's written and don't skip a beat. And you know what, Griff? You'll answer the five R's with the three questions that are at the end of that script. And you will also, DJ Debt Free, answer a debt free question. You'll get to determine is this a debt free appointment? Or is this a mortgage protection appointment with the three questions on that best system script? And I'm ready to dive into it. What, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I want to leave a little bit of time for Eric here. And uh, for sure, that's so good. I want you guys to understand like her posturing on the phone. She doesn't get in there and she's super excited. I've heard you on the phone before, right? You're not like super excited to be on the phone. And, and all, you have a smile on your face and you're professional. Like that is the well, thing. That's a relatable, baby. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to save a little bit of time for Eric here. Um, and Aaron, feel free to jump in if you'd like, uh, Julie. Just uh, I want to kind of, you guys are great. I love how y'all go back and forth too. That's like one of the, one of my favorite things about working with you guys as a couple. Um, Eric, uh, can we switch over for just for a minute? I want to ask you just a couple questions. Um, so Eric, you know, for a little while you were working on your issued business. Uh, you were, you were not actually super focused on issuing business, right? Um, you were, you were, maybe tell us a little bit about what that looks like. And, and you were, you were writing a lot of business, but not all of it was going through. And now that's completely changed. I read those numbers off earlier. You guys master agency 84%. I'm sorry. Uh, the, uh, 92.4% and your base at 91% just last month. So that's obviously an attention to detail from your perspective. You guys are very focused on that. So why, what, what made that change happen? Like, was it the promotion guidelines? Was it, you know, what, what does that look like? Thanks, Griff. Uh, direct to Mike Ungarin Gamba, Eric and Julie Prabula, uh, obviously part of the Sarah Bailey, Griff Martin, and Edward Pritchett hierarchy. Um, I want to just say thank you to uh, Brandon, Casey, and Brian for what they've created here. Um, it's just been truly amazing what we've been able to accomplish over the last six years. And going in front going behind these three uh, and 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 then also to follow Jacob Pogue and and Andrew Jimenez I mean I got like a notepad by the way Keith this is the book you gave me I got like a notepad just filled with notes um and if you don't then you need to go back to this recording like Julie said so let's talk about what it was like in the beginning I came from uh, a prior insurance business uh they taught me how to do fully underwritten business I came with that mentality. If you're a licensed agent and you've, you're coming with that mentality, um, wipe it out, okay? Because when I started, uh, you know, I thought it was all about price. You know, these guys all and gals all talked about price and 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 it's not all about price, right? But but and and my mentor told me that, you know, it's not all about price. What happens if you sell that price and they die before they get the policy? Because we all know that fully underwritten business takes uh, 30, 60, 90, 120 days. Now, we do do it with Debt Free Life and some other things, but um, we want to get that client covered right away. And really, the price doesn't matter, okay? Because the reason why they filled out the form is to get that. And it took me a little bit of time to, to, to change that over, Griff, to, to change my mindset, right? We talk about changing our mindset here. And I had to change my mindset as a producer. Mm. Once I changed my mindset as a producer, I was able to, and I'm going to just uh, quote uh, Jacob and Andrew, they talked about building a culture, right? So I first had to change my mindset as a producer before I could build a culture for our agency, right? And, and we could, and Julie and I could build that. And once we were able, because we, once we, we started issuing business, then we had to change the mindset of our agents too, right? We were at a 50% issue rate three years ago um, from an agency standpoint. And we had to, to do a couple things to make that change. And, and you know, I got to give a shout out to my buddy, Josh Busick, who uh, shared his story. And we invited on onto our call a few years ago to talk about how he changed that for himself and for his and for his agency. And we implemented a couple of things. And, and, and one of the things that we have with our agency is we have um, the 70% club. You know, we all know that we have to issue 65% of our business that with symmetry, we need to have a rolling 60% average. So we started the 70% club and, and the 70% club just means that you have to at least write 10 apps over a 90 day period and, and most write more than that, that are in the club, but they have to write 10 apps over a 90 day period and they have to issue 70%. 
Now, if they write less than that, or if they issue anything above 60, they're in the hunt, okay? So we, we still give them a shout out. Um, the last six to nine months, we've had issue pay contests. So every quarter we have an issue pay contest. This one is to get to altitude. If you issue pay 30,000 over three months, 10, it's 10,000 a month. Not only are you gonna earn a producer bonus, you're gonna earn a promotion most likely, but you're also gonna earn your room and uh, your room paid for at conference, right? So there's things like that that we've done in our agency to create a culture of, of um, issue paid business. And on top of that, when Symmetry announced their promotion guidelines and really changed that, uh, even though we all knew that we had to issue 65%, well, now it's just straight up in front of us. And I think that really helps. So all of those have come into play to create where we're at today. Well, one common theme that I've seen with every single one of you is that you write one or two carriers. That's it. You guys are like, you're very, you're very specific about that. I know Keith writes a lot of Foresters, writes a lot of America. I know Ken writes a lot of America and, and, and I believe American Amicable. He did, they pick one or two companies and they get really, really good at those companies. These are veterans, right? These are people that have been here for a little while. People might, who are new might think, oh, they're, you know, they know all these products. They know 20 different companies that they can diversify through and all this stuff. No, they knew one or two. Right. I mean, they know a lot of these companies, don't get me wrong. You guys are very knowledgeable in the products and all that, but your focus is on one or two companies, getting to know those companies, making relationships with those, with these underwriters, right? We have direct access to, with a lot of our carriers to the underwriters. And you obviously want to treat them with utmost respect, obviously, whenever it's there that help you out. Um, but that's, a, that's another thing that I've noticed you guys have done is you've narrowed down that, those, that carrier list um, and putting contests around issue and numbers, right? You also write a lot of business, right? Every, how many applications do you typically write in, in, you know, in one home? I mean, look, I'm always going to, and I love what Keith said um, about um, when he goes, if they show up, I'm writing an app. And I remember, like, I would always tell Julie, and Julie came out with, with, with me too. We did it, to, we went out together, but we'd say, like, if we get in the home, it's a 95% close ratio, right? Mm -hmm. If we get in the home, right? So, um, I mean, when we go in the home, we're already anticipating four applications at least two accidentals, two mortgage protection. Anything above that, and it just depends, like Julie qualifies so well on the phone. So, you know, if we know that there's, you know, three grandkids or three kids, then uh, we're already going to start talking about um, Smart Start program and kids policies. And we're actually going to bring that up during the real system. I'm not going to get into that, um, but you can go on SoundCloud and find that SoundCloud that we did on the Monday morning where we talked about how we present that. But um, so automatically, I'm looking at four policies and Really, the whole purpose of, of writing additional policies, not only to cover the clients and, and to create value for them, is also to um, create that, that client for life, right? Because you're creating a friend, you're creating a client for life, you're creating somebody that you can continue to go back to. Uh, you know, when we're going in the homes, we're, we're, we're scheduled, right? As soon as we write that policy, we're scheduling an appointment to go back. Right. Um, you know, we're we're bam famming it, as Casey Watkins says, you know, a book, a meeting from a meeting. So while I'm sitting there and whether I issued it right away or not, I'm letting them know, hey, great, your policy issued. You should have it in about a week. I'm going to come back at this time next week. How does that work for your calendar? And and we're booking that meeting to come back and say, look, I just want to come back. I want to make sure that you understand the policy. I want to go over the reduced paid up in your whole life policy. I want to talk about, um, you know, some of the living benefits that come in the policy that we talked about, because I want them to remember those things. I want them to remember, you know, Ken talked about um, how uh, one of the other reps that were with us in Vegas ask them about how do your policy stay on the books? They stay on the books because we go back and we talk about it and we create value and, and we constantly are connecting with them. Now we might not talk to them for a year or so, but we still connect with those clients. So I think all of those really come into play to really keep that business and keep a client for life. I talked to my client for life, the, the, the lady who we wrote 70 and all 75 apps weren't off her, 
her, you know, family, but um, there was a good amount that were, but um, I talked to her once a month, at least mm-hmm. she calls me, you know, and, and we check in with her and, and see how she's doing and see how the family's doing. Uh, you know, Julie and I attended her wedding. I mean, half the wedding was our clients, you know, so it was just, um, you know, creating that client for life is so important, you know, and, and, and digging yeah. into that relationship, you know, half the wedding was our clients. Did you guys hear that? I mean, that's crazy to me. That's so incredible, man. Well, the entire wedding party actually were our clients. So. The entire wedding party were your clients. I mean, this is, and, and I feel like I've had to cut each one of you off. I probably could have had, I could have had each one of you on a call, like just like this and gone for an hour. So um, I'm so glad. Appreciate appreciate you guys so much for pouring into us. And I hope you guys understand like what these guys are doing is next level, right? Who they are as a person is next level right? It's not just about following a script and then being, you know, if you feel like you're kind of dry on the phone, chances are you're dry on the phone, right? (laughs) Record yourself, listen to yourself. Who are you being for these people that you're working with? Are you being a little bit vulnerable like Keith was talking about? Are you setting a clear expectation for your people like Kim was talking about? Are you digging in a little bit on the phone and finding those other potential ways we can help that family? And then finally, you know, Eric, I love it, man. Just, I mean, are you, what's your focus? Is it issue business, right? Are you putting a focus on it? And I promise you guys this, if you can work a little bit at this, work on your habits a little bit on a day-to-day basis, you'll find yourself getting paid much more than you're paying probably with the same effort, right? We're not talking about, you know, working twice as much. We're talking about being a better person, right? For these people, you create that environment for your client, right? You open the doors. When you open those doors, what's that experience that they have? So I think, I think, I'm going to pass it back to you, Todd, man. I'm, I'm super proud of everything that these guys and what they've done. And I'm just so grateful to be uh, on this call, man. So thank you so much, Todd. I appreciate you. Tremendous uh, gratitude to you guys for pouring in and the effort and the preparation for this is just so apparent. And uh, my cell phone, the comments, I can't type back any faster. Um, this was the, um, the example that I would love for us all to dig into. This, this balance you guys just brought to us of inspiration and practical nuggets that we can go implement in our business starting as soon as we hang up this Zoom call. So uh, one quick thing, Julie, repeat your five R's for me again. We had a lot of people ask. So I'm gonna just quickly, uh, because everyone's asking and I hope you see my screen, maybe not, let me stop sharing. Um, So the five R's, um, really you answer all the questions with questions three, four and five of the best system script. And that's, Rugrats, recruits, replacement, retirement, and referrals. Those five R's are the last step of the real system, but you can answer those questions, all those uh, five R's in the best system script. Don't leave those questions out. Question number three is debt free living question. Uh, remind me, uh, you know, how much are you paying on your mortgage every month? People will tell you they're paying more. Great, that's that's the intro to, well, we got a product for you, you know, where you don't have to spend any extra money uh, and paying, you know, get rid of debt, including your mortgage without anything extra, right? I'm gonna go ahead and make a note of that so we can talk about that during our appointment. Don't even ask for permission, just check it off Love your it. list. Love it. Love it. I appreciate that, Julie. That came through in the comments so often. You guys all did an incredible job. Eric, Keith, Ken, amazing. Griff, you're an amazing leader. You're an amazing father. You probably have the cutest kid on the planet right now. <laughs> and that work-life balance is apparent because if, if, if a cool song comes on, that baby's up and dancing and jamming. And uh, that comes from an intentional time with, with two loving, wonderful parents. And uh, we appreciate you, Griff, your organization, and we can't wait to see you guys at 120. We'll Everybody take care. And if you had anybody missed this call today, find it in HQ, find it in the SoundCloud, get it to your new agents. This is a whole book of nuggets. Appreciate you all. Thanks, Todd. See you, buddy. <laughs>